Today's video topic is meditation and is meditation a scam? While the definition of meditation varies all the way from doing philosophy and self-introspection to having no thoughts and never thinking, I think there is a mainstream definition of meditation and it leans more towards the no thinking sort of thing. I want to try a meditation exercise right now. First, I want you to take your ego and wrap it in a palm leaf. Now, I want to burn it using your integrity. Ah, ah, ah! I know what you're thinking. I don't have the time for that. Time is just a causality. Time is just empty fragments. I think people really overcomplicate consciousness to a large extent, and I think there's really only three things you can do to modify your consciousness. The first thing is manipulating your reality. The second thing is manipulating the thoughts within your brain. And the third thing is controlling your attention. Every single mental exercise I've ever seen in my life is just a variation of these three things. Now I think how I would define meditation based on what other people are saying is it comes down to just two of these processes. Controlling your attention and controlling the environment inside your mind. And I think the reason for controlling these things is primarily to make a person feel better. Now some people use meditation as a system for enlightenment and I would say that's not meditation by the common definition, I would say that's philosophy. While I don't think there's any perfect algorithm that's going to work on every person, I think there's going to be many algorithms that work better than others. Now out of all the different definitions I've heard, I think probably the best one I've heard is Ani Kantfad's definition, and his definition is he has no definition. <laughs> there is no algorithm. To a large extent, what I think he's saying is there's thousands of different types of algorithms you can come up with, and they all vary for the individual, and it's a lifelong process of learning what works for you. One of the big problems with meditation is very vague definitions of results. If someone tries an algorithm and it doesn't work, well then the person promoting the algorithm simply tells them, oh, you're not doing it right. Oh, you're not doing it for long enough. The most important thing I think to consider when it comes to meditation is mental energy. It's very important to remember that consciously controlling your attention or consciously controlling the thoughts in your head drains your mental energy. Thus, if there's not massive emotional benefits from a meditation practice, we should dismiss it. And as of such, it's also very important to pay attention to just how taxing it is on the mind. If the benefits of meditation are only mild, then the mental energy we're sacrificing will not justify the effort. And the meditation practice will also be unsustainable. The second major thing to look for is, can the results be repeated? Diverting your attention from what you would normally pay attention to and thinking about things that you would normally not think about is almost always going to create a new experience and new experiences almost always come with strong emotions attached to them. Because of something being a new experience, it often has an exaggerated emotional effect and this emotional effect can wear off very quickly. Thus, we have to look at the sustainability of any meditation practice. And perhaps the only sustainable meditation practice there is, is one that is not defined one that is constantly changing and adapting. Lastly, I think it's very important to evaluate the cons of a technique. We can't have a confirmation bias when evaluating meditation. Does this technique cause us to suffer and how often? And does this suffering outweigh the benefits? Now I would like to evaluate more mainstream meditation and this has a lot to do with diverting your attention to different feelings within your body. I would say that this method is somewhat overrated. So for example, let's say you have extreme anxiety and you pay attention to your breathing. Well, this might make you notice that you're breathing insanely fast and this might make you 10 times more anxious. Now we have to ask the question, does mainstream meditation have a profound result? Now I've tried mindful eating, I've tried paying attention to my breathing, I've tried all these different uh, mainstream meditation techniques and I found that for the most part, they have a very mild result. 
there's a very mild change in your emotional state. And the one thing I found that meditation is useful for is falling asleep. I find that um, if my brain is racing too fast at night and I pay attention to my breathing, I can sleep easier. And lastly, we have to ask, is this emotional result sustainable? So I've been trying this before in the past and it hasn't worked at all. And now I'm trying it now and it is working and maybe in two weeks it'll stop working again. I would say that not thinking is only more effective than thinking positively when it comes to a matter of falling asleep. When you want to sleep, you want no thoughts. You want no energy. The next major thing they always talk a lot about in meditation is focusing on the present, and I also think that this is silly. If the present is currently a really shitty situation, then I think it would be a lot more useful to focus on the future or to focus on a past good memory in order to find motivation. Aside from being able to sleep a bit better, I haven't found any benefits to mainstream meditation, and for the amount of time and effort I invested in it, I would say other meditation techniques have paid off a lot more. So for example, I'll use Anikant Vod's technique, which is about controlling the speed of your mind. He has this thing called um, the valve of experience and learning to control the speed at which you think. So I think that's actually a lot more effective and useful than the mainstream ideas. Wait a minute, why did my location just change to inside a house? Never ask why. Instead, ask who. Location is just a hypothesis. Lastly, I would say a very important aspect of feeling good is manipulating the world around you. Now while it is important to control your mind and it is important to control your attention, it's also important to not be in a shitty situation and if you never think about negative things, you're probably going to end up in a shitty situation. If we're always positively delusional, then we Jin will not improve. And lastly, remember to fractalize your enigma. Deconstruct your evolution. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up share it, subscribe. Most of my videos only get like 20 views because most people don't share it and stuff. So I would really appreciate it if you do that. Logical Morality is a totally non-profit charity. We do not accept donations and we do not enable AdSense.